visiting one of the biggest discount bookstores in Ohio. One of us came prepared. Glorious hair. <laughs> I am Felicity Under. The cover. <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Hello fellow YouTubers, I'm Cassandra Joy and welcome to my channel. I just need to take a second to gush over this new camera. Can you see the lighting difference? I haven't changed anything in my space, but the quality of the camera takes care of all of that. Just makes me feel so happy. Anyway, I'm sipping on my coffee and greens to start my breakfast off. I will be making myself some sourdough toast. I am experimenting with that a little bit. I haven't found a good keto bread yet, so until I do, I'm going with the lesser evil, which is simple ingredient sourdough. And you may have noticed that I'm a little bit more dressed up than usual. I'm wearing a long black maxi dress that I got from ASOS. Makes me feel so elegant and beautiful, like I'm about to take model pictures. And I feel like if you wanna have a good day, you need to dress in the clothes that make you feel like a model. But today would be a good day no matter what I wore because I'm gonna be hanging out with my friend Nicole and we're gonna have a writing day. We haven't done one of these since before summer and it's way overdue. But before we hole ourselves up in a coffee shop, we're gonna make a pit stop at one of my favorite book places to shop called One Dollar Book Swap. The premise of it is that everything there is a dollar and if you want, you can donate books that you no longer want anymore to them and they give you in-store credit. So last night I went through my entire bookshelf and gathered all of the books that I don't want anymore, books that I've tried to read and just haven't spoken to me, things that I know I'll never pick up again. I think it added up to about five to seven books. I put all that in a box and I'm gonna take that with me. But while I was doing that, I got the idea. I always have books sitting out over here. I decided to keep this strictly to books I haven't read yet and need to. So every book that was on my bookshelf that I had bought but just hadn't read or had started but hadn't finished, they've all gone here. And my plan is to slowly work my way through each of them. So I'm gonna have to be careful with how many books I buy today <laughs> because I only have so much room on this side table for to be read books. I only have about 10 minutes before I need to leave so I'm gonna finish getting my breakfast, head out the door and go meet Nicole at $1 Book Swap. Thought I would show you if you guys remember from my last thrifting video at a Goodwill, I found these three storage containers. They all have wooden spoons on the side. Finally washed them and got them set up. And I plan to use them to put all of my supplements in. But the best part is that each of my supplements fit perfectly. I don't even have to take it out of their container. I can just keep it in there. So if I need to take it on the go, I can and it keeps me from dirtying up my containers. How cool is that? So the butter I would normally use molded. <laughs> I didn't even know butter could mold. So I threw that away and got out this whipped salted butter. It's not my favorite. It doesn't go on the smoothest, but it'll do. I don't normally do butter either, but I'm out of my favorite sunflower butter, so I have to make do. But I am excited about this. I'm gonna try this frog jam. I got this when I was in Urbana with Nicole, and it has fig, raspberry, orange, and ginger in it. Just from licking the spoon, I can tell you the jelly tastes very good. So I think I'm going to enjoy this breakfast and then head out the door so I'm not late. Not quite sure how to show you my outfit, but I'm wearing this maxi dress that has two slits in the, on each side. And I'm wearing this Patricia Nash thrifted bag that I got from ThreadUp. Absolutely love it. Taking this out for a test run today. Curled my hair with the bathrobe belt technique. And then I'm just wearing some gold jewelry that I already had. Bracelet is thrifted, earrings are thrifted from my mom. And necklace, I think I got from ASOS. 
I'm definitely running late because I didn't think at all about not having any gas. We're gonna see how full I am. Can I make it? No, I will not make it. <laughs> okay, I need to stop for gas. Shoot, oh, that's just how my life goes. I always get up early in plenty of time to be on time. Just never seems to work out that way. I've got my trusty box of books to donate. Nicole's already inside, so I'm gonna go see if I can find her. And here's Nicole in her natural habitat in the children's chapter book section. Okay, so I'm looking at Magic Tree House right now. This is going to be really bad. Don't judge me. Because I want these books for my classroom to read to my kids. They're like graders. They love Magic Tree House. I'm looking for certain numbers that I don't have. Is it bad that I actually want to take all these out and put them by number? <laughs> That's a little OCD, Nicole. It's killing me that I can't find number 10. And I'm having to look at every single one. This is annoying. I want to organize. I mean, I won't stop you if that's what you want to do. I need you to stop me. <laughs> I mean, if it makes you happy, I'll support you. <laughs> it makes me happy, actually. So I donated my books and I was able to get a two item store credit. So I can get two books for free, which is really nice. So I think I'm gonna go on the search. I'll leave Nicole to stressing about the unorganization of the chapter books and go search for some books to get. Didn't think about it, but I need a cart. Knowing me anyway. So the kind of books I'm looking for this time are beachy, summery kind of books that basically get me into the summer mood and help me enjoy the summer to the fullest. And then, I want some mysteries. I love me a good mystery. You can never go wrong. It goes with any season. So I'm in the romance section right now. They're not all those kind of romance books. <laughs> I'm looking for the ones that are not those, just to see if I can find anything that has a beachy theme to it. Nicole has joined me. I have. <laughs> After she finished organizing those books, she said she was gonna, and she did. It was calling, <laughs> and I answered. She has a problem. I really do. So beautiful now. But we love her anyway. It's beautiful. <laughs> I found a few books, but I'm still on the hunt. Nicole has found more books than I have. I always do. <laughs> well, I mean, that's true. <laughs> Loving books is not a problem. I asked everybody on Instagram for any summer book recommendations that are immersive and have to do with a beach or summer romance, summer mystery, something like that. But the immersive part is the clincher because to me the setting is just as important as the story. Let me see on Instagram if anybody has responded yet. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, you should because I ask your guys advice, I update you on life. Basically I ask you a lot of questions, including what are your book recommendations? So make sure to follow me, link in the description. Ooh, that one looks good. Song from the Sea. Oh, that's cool. Hey, you're looking for your ocean one. Mm -hmm. These are all paperbacks. None of them are really authors that I've heard of, but I kind of like that because I'm the kind of person that doesn't read hyped up books right away. I wait until everyone's forgotten about them and then I read them. <laughs> it's just less pressure. Because then everybody expects you to like it. And what if you don't? Maybe the mermaid. <laughs> that is summer. Definitely summer. Wait, is it that kind of romance book? Hold on. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> the cover. <laughs> Not my kind of book at all. What's that about? Probably, uh, lovers. <laughs> Nicole and I were just talking about how I've stopped feeling guilty for shutting books and stopping mid-sentence, mid-paragraph if the book just isn't speaking to me. If I don't like it, if I'm not 
invested after a couple chapters, I put it down. Life is too short to waste on books you don't like. I was reading a book for my coworkers, and it was like the worst book in the world, and I feel guilty about that <laughs> because it's it's got like nominations and awards. Really? Oh yeah. I could hardly get through the first chapter. I read like three or four, but then I just stopped and I couldn't I couldn't finish it. Oh, that it was disturbing. Oh, I mean the first chapter. Oh, was it that book. one? The graveyard. The book. one. Yep. No, I was, it's a kid's book. That is not supposed to be a kid's book. No. We won't even tell you what book it is. But it was not a appropriate for kids. No. And yet they're making kids read it. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. I understand you putting that one down. See, you can't feel guilty about this stuff. I can't describe to you how big this place is. It just keeps going and it's impossible to really show you. I'm in the audiobook section right now because last time we were here, they were closing and I didn't have time to look at anything. So I wanted to make sure I set aside time to look at audiobooks. And they have quite the selection. So, uh, <laughs> we're hot. It's a fan. <sighs> Glorious air! <laughs> <laughs> Say what you will about this place. It's a great treasure trove for books, but it's hot. <laughs> All right, we're just checking out. We finally called it quits. We can't afford it anymore. Yeah. Uh, we're not counting mine. Why not? Because it's more than four. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't get that many this time. I never was. But they're so beautiful. <laughs> we'll have to do a haul later. <laughs> well, one of us came prepared. Yes, I did. <laughs> and I'm only a little bit embarrassed, but I'm also proud. <laughs> Just dedication is all. I could never live without books. No. That would be a sad existence. Really now that we're all done shopping for books, I'll do a haul later. We're gonna head out to our favorite coffee shop and get some work done on our books. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's cooler out here than it was in there. Shoo! We're gonna blast the AC, head to the coffee shop. Get the food, I'm not get today. Yeah, food is definitely a must. <laughs> it's stormy. Me too. And we'll see you there. somehow beat Nicole here. <laughs> I don't see her car. I hope she didn't get lost. While I'm waiting, I figured I would show you the books that I got. I only got four in total, so it cost me something like $2 since I had that little two item voucher for donating some books. If you live in the Ohio area and you've never been to One Dollar Book Swap, I highly recommend it. Especially if you're a bookworm, if you love movies or TV shows, they have aisles for that as well. Their audiobook section is phenomenal. I love holding a book in my hands, but honestly, time doesn't allow me to just sit down and dedicate to just reading. Having an audiobook makes commutes to work a lot faster and allows me to multitask. I can clean while I listen, that kind of thing. Now onto the books. The first one here is called Palmetto Dreams. The cover's gorgeous. I love all the pinks. Let's see. It's focusing on my face. There we go. Now you can see the cover. Oh, so pretty, right? This book is by Terry Fowler, and the tagline says, A Second Chance for Lasting Love. This is a compilation of three different stories, and it takes place in South Carolina. That was the main reason why I picked this up, because I just finished reading Where the Crawdads Sing, and that was such a good book. It was very immersive and made you feel like you were there. The descriptions were just on point. You know a book is good if it's descriptive, but it doesn't bog down the plot by being so. It's a rare thing, books like that. So I was instantly kind of drawn to this anyway, but it looks like it might be by a Christian author because it mentions God and him having a hand in some of the love stories. If you don't know, I'm a born again believer, so having God mentioned in books does not bother me whatsoever, but Strangely enough, I am reluctant to read Christian fiction because in my experience, the quality isn't there all the time. Sometimes it is, 
the majority of the time it's not. So I always pick up Christian authors with a little bit of hesitancy, but we'll see. This might be okay. Won't know till I read it. So I'm excited to give that a go. Ah, oh, there's Nicole. She got Jim's donuts. That's why you were late. Look at this unapologetic girl. What do you have to say for yourself? So good. <laughs> This is what I have to say for myself. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! I feel betrayed. But now you can sit there while I finish my book haul. Enjoy your donut. Do you want one? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> Thank you though. <laughs> the next book I picked up is actually by Pioneer Woman. If you don't know, she has an entire business. I've seen her cookbooks, her dishware. She's made an entire business around this Pioneer Woman genre. I did not know she had books. This one is very Western, features a cowboy. I have never read her books before, but I thought, I'll give it a try. It seems like it could be fun. And I can't tell if it's a true story or not, because the way the back was written, it kind of feels like it might have been her story, maybe fictionized a little bit. The last book I got is this one, Song from the Sea. The title had me picking it up, and the back of the book had me buy it. <laughs> In a spellbinding tale that sweeps from a rugged Greek island to the scandal and intrigue of Regency England, best-selling author Catherine Kingsley gives us a man haunted by the past, a woman without a future, and a seduction that begins amid the howling winds of storm-tossed sea. It doesn't look like one of those romances, so I think we're safe. I will let you know. Just the fact that it takes place on a ship, involves the sea, and has a love story, it just seemed like the perfect kind of book. So, picked that up. One more! One more! I can't wait for you inside. See if that table's available. Fine. First donuts, then you abandon me. I needed something. <laughs> Fine. Bye. The last item I got was an audiobook. The minute I saw this, I knew I had to have it. It's called Last Boy. If you know me at all, you know anything to do with Peter Pan, instantly tugs at my heart. This one looks like an interesting take on the story we all know and love. Last Boy, the true story of Captain Hook. I'll read the back because it explains the story far better than I can, and I think you'll find it interesting. There is one version of my story that everyone knows, and then there is the truth. This is how it happened. How I went from being Peter Pan's first and favorite lost boy to his greatest enemy. Peter brought me to his island because there were no rules and no grown-ups to make us mind. He brought boys from the other place to join in the fun, but Peter's idea of fun is sharper than a pirate's sword because it's never been all fun and games on this island. Our neighbors are pirates and monsters. Our toys are knife and stick and rock, the kinds of playthings that bite. Peter promised we would all be young and happy forever. Peter lies. This sounds so good. I cannot wait to listen to that. I'm currently listening to an audiobook right now, but as soon as I finish that one, I'll be listening to this. Okay, Nicole went in to get us a table while I did a haul for you, so now I'm going to go in. See what kind of table she stagged. Aha! You snagged a good table. sugar is better than normal sugar, so I got that. And then I just got my typical ice milk latte made with this little content. Cheers! So we've been chatting for a few hours. 
<laughs> per usual. We haven't worked at all, so we're about to get started. My hair's been on the whole time. I know, mine has been too. We've just been catching up. We, do. Mm -hmm. we both have goals that we're trying to meet with our books. You're trying to add your word count. I am trying to read and catch up on what I've written because it's been a couple of years, I feel like a year, a year since I've really truly written anything. So I've been rereading it and fixing mistakes and catching myself up on what I've done. And I'm still trying to cut down words. So I had over 300,000 words. I've cut it down to 293,000-ish words. You're below 300. I am below 300. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's a big deal to me. I, I think I've said this in a different vlog, but my goal for the summer was to get this in the hands of someone by the end. I don't think that timeline's gonna hold, <laughs> but it's still something I'd like to pursue with some form of regularity. Today's task is to cut down on words. I'll put you somewhere for a time lapse and we're gonna get to work. lipstick is completely gone but I was very productive today I only got through one chapter but it was a chunky chapter I think the original word count for that chapter was over 3,000 words and I was able to cut out a thousand over a thousand words of just that one chapter so that felt really good if I can do that or more for every chapter in the book I think I'll be good <laughs> I appreciate you guys allowing me the space to update you on little progress reports concerning my book. I know it's hard to really explain anything in detail because I'm keeping the plot and the characters and the title all very hush-hush. Not because I don't want to share it with you. I would share everything if I could, but there's always a risk of someone stealing my idea or the title and that would just devastate me. So I'm keeping it really close to the vest for now. But the minute I feel like it's safe to share things with you, I will be sharing my book in abundance. Characters, inspiration, writing advice, dialogue snippets, plot sneak peeks, all the things. I cannot wait to get to that point, but one step at a time. And that's why days like today are so important. To set aside time to prioritize my book. No one else is going to prioritize my passions but me. And if I don't prioritize them, they'll never happen. And I cannot live with myself if they never happened especially this dream. So thanks again for being with me on this little writing journey. I hope you enjoyed visiting one of the biggest discount bookstores in Ohio. That's always a fun place for me to visit. I love going there and I find something to read every single time. <laughs> For better or worse, I always find something. Now I'm gonna go in, relax for the evening, see if I can work on my book a little bit more off camera, but I'm gonna leave the vlog here. Hope you guys enjoyed this short and sweet vlog and coming along with me to hang out with Nicole, doing all the bookish things. Days like today are always so fun for me, not only to film, but to experience. But to make sure you don't miss out on all of those future exciting things coming up, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a future video from me. I upload on Wednesdays and Saturdays, both at 6 a.m and I would love for you to be a part of this little online family. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. Mwah.